The end of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies is here. This game has been all over the place this year with some high points and some low points. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new overview that they've got for the content coming mid-season as ever. Starting with the fact that the end is here. So we're going to be diving into that today and breaking it down. And I'll also be sharing my thoughts a little bit on just whether or not they really succeeded with Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. Was it a gigantic failure? in the end? Did it actually surpass expectations? We'll get into that as we go, but first let's let's get a little bit of sort of meat on the bone here and start talking about some of the stuff that they have coming mid-season. So, like I said, the end is here. They say, descend into the dark ether to disrupt and sever the link between Dr. Jansen and the entity. Experience a gravity-defying dark ether arena featuring ethereum launch pads and an all-new boss. So, looks like these are the ethereum launch pads. Honestly, kind of cool, I guess. It's not like we haven't seen those sorts of launch pads before. This is very much repurposed content, so it's not something I'm losing my mind over, but it's still cool to see it. I'm not going to complain about anti-gravity, so... That's there, I guess. Uh, it also says Brave the Dark Ether and unlock a new replayable experience and earn three new schematics. Can you survive the horrors ahead? We've certainly heard that before. So three new schematics, pretty much in line with our expectations there. Nothing too crazy. So let's talk about the final story mission. This is the graphic for it. Honestly, when I first saw this image down here, I thought this was the big bad guy from 9, the Black Ops 4 map, but it's obviously not. I just sort of mistook it at a glance. Scrolling down here, it says, Operation Deadbolt must face the ultimate challenge in confronting the entity in a terrifying new section of the Dark Ether. Use Ethereum launch pads to soar through the environment and keep away from the dangerous hordes of undead lurking on the ground. Essentially what they already said in the patch notes. Prepare to abandon all hope as you make your way towards the climactic conclusion and the final boss. Now, this is a good sign because I have been a little worried that when Treyarch handed this off to Sledgehammer and they basically said, you guys are in control of this now, I was worried that they were going to basically give up on any hope of actually putting a new boss in or actually making some kind of meaningful conclusion here. I thought it might just fizzle out. But the fact that they're talking about a climactic conclusion and... A final boss of some kind is a good sign. The concern that I now have is that they've hyped it up in this way, mentioning that there's a final boss, and then what we're expecting to be a new final boss of some kind is either just another worm, it's just like a new color, they just repurposed it, or it's just a zombie that's really strong, or it's like a mega abomination that we have to take down or something. If that's what we get as the final boss, that's gonna suck. So fingers crossed they steer clear of that error that I feel like they could possibly make here. Wouldn't put it past them to disappoint us in that way, just based on the unfortunate reality of how Monofair 3 Zombies' story and life cycle has gone since about season one reloaded. So let's see what this image looks like. Again, it's certainly nothing that we haven't seen before. So, yeah, I mean, it looks cool. I like the fact that it looks like there's going to be quite a lot of sort of islands that we can jump to here. Maybe there's going to be some sort of parkour challenges that we can do. That would be fun. Survive the narrative-driven final story mission to unlock the conclusion cinematic. So there is going to be a cinematic. That's good news. And secure the first piece needed to access the new Dark Ether Rift. Again, sort of nothing crazy there. And then they're talking about this new Dark Ether Rift mid-season, which, again, looks like stuff we've seen before. Nothing really too wild. It says, stay alert for clues and work with the community to discover the path towards a lucrative and lethal Season 5 Reloaded Dark Ether Rift. I will say lucrative is kind of weird wording to use here when nothing in Monofair 3 Zombies feel like it, feels like it has any real value. It just doesn't really feel like something that's actually present in the game, to be honest. So we'll see, I guess. But when the previous Dark Ether Rift was so bad that I didn't even bother downloading the patch, uh, I'm sort of skeptical of the fact that this one is suddenly going to be lucrative and actually attract me to play it in any kind of meaningful way. It says this perilous challenge offers players a fresh way to experience the Dark Ether and awards the opportunity to earn powerful rewards, including permanent unlocks. Cool, I guess. We'll see. My hope in this mode has really been sort of crushed, I think, in many ways over the year. Uh, started off very positive overall, uh, but it's just increasingly gotten beaten down, I think. So I'm not getting my expectations or my hopes up here, uh, but certainly opportunities to get cool unlocks and stuff is something that I'm curious to see what they do with, at least. I'm certainly curious. 
They also say new secrets and schematics. That's something that I'm always excited to hear. New schematics is always interesting. So we've got the Disciple Bottle, Grenade Bandolier, and Stash Increase. The fact that the Stash Increase has been saved this long and it's now a schematic... That's crazy. <laughs> that's just kind of crazy stuff. Personally, I don't feel like a stash increase makes sense to even be a schematic. But ultimately, if we're getting it, we're getting it. That's good. That's a good thing. Not going to be negative about that. We've wanted stash increases. We've got little drips here and there. This will hopefully be a much more meaningful stash increase and make a bigger difference to the folks that are still playing. So there's just sort of some generic text here. The Disciple Bottle spawns a friendly disciple to wreak havoc against your foes. Grenade Bandolier replenishes your lethal and tactical equipment over time, allowing you to regularly bombard enemies. That's pretty cool, actually. I think that that's going to be a fun addition. It's going to be fun to just spam. And then the stash increase will increase your stash size to 30. Okay. It's better. Okay. It's better. It's not 50. <laughs> it's not 100, but it's better. So credit where it's due. It's a stash increase. We've been asking for, for, for a long time. We could always do with more stash increases. So fair enough. That's it for Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. We've basically got these three schematics, which I don't think anyone's going to be clambering head over heels for. We've got the new Dark Aether Rift, which is just going to be a new Dark Aether Rift. People were already very unhappy with those when they came out in the last patch. And then it's the story mission, which I'm hopeful for being exciting. But uh, at this point, sort of we'll see, I suppose. So what does this mean overall for Black Ops 6? And what does this mean for the fate of this Zombies mode, right? Did they kind of miss our expectations? Did they oversell this and then have to sort of deal with the consequences of the player base really falling off because they just stopped finding the mode fun once it stopped receiving meaningful patches? Honestly, I kind of feel like that's the way that things have gone. I feel like they had a real opportunity with the start of this game to deploy updates in a way that meant that the gameplay meaningfully changed through the year. I thought that there was a huge opportunity, and I think I mentioned this in my original reviews of the mode, there was a huge opportunity to do live service events in this mode. So, for example, the Black Ops 6 reveal could have had a moment similar to the Cold War reveal that happened in Warzone, where all the players were running across the map and there were these videos that were blinking onto the screen and kind of giving you almost this flashbacks feel and this like message being beamed into your head in a kind of numbers station kind of vibe as you're trying to complete these objectives and it's this massive community moment. That was so possible. That was so achievable with the sandbox that Modern Warfare 3 Zombies provided. And they just didn't do it. They let slip this huge opportunity to leverage for the first time a global global zombies community massive multiplayer online play space and do something really cool with it for Black Ops 6 and they just didn't. It's tragic, I think. I think that that was one of the things I was really looking forward to and really hopeful for and it's just there's not even a whisper of that as being a possibility. I think that the overall core gameplay that they achieved had some real moments of greatness towards the start of this year. I thought that that first worm fight uh, when I beat the worm the, for the first time ever and everyone was in my chat hyping me up and Treyarch were even in my chat hyping me up and that's Treyarch that like has refused to talk to me historically over the last several years. That was a cool moment, right? It was cool debuting that for all you guys for the first time and, and, and beating that together. It was also really cool seeing the red worm fight and seeing how difficult it was and how much of a challenge and how it, it kind of became something that you would sort of tell your mates about like, oh my god, did you hear about this extra secret worm that you have to do this extra quest for that nobody really knows about yet and it's insanely hard and if you die you lose all your progress so the stakes are really high that was cool right like season one season one reloaded that little window that we had towards the very start of this game's life cycle was freaking awesome and then christmas hit basically and since then i feel like there's just been a series of expectation misses that treyarch have set and that haven't been sort of followed up on or haven't been delivered on. So the, the whole premise of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies being the most popular third mode ever in Modern Warfare history, that's all well and good, right, to say that at launch, but it certainly wasn't the most supported third mode in Modern Warfare history. So felt like there was a mismatch there. It also was really unfortunate, I think, that they announced that Treyarch were the ones developing it, and then Treyarch just left the project. And granted, I'm always going to be in favor of Treyarch 
focusing on their main game, right? I'm always going to be more inclined to say, Treyarch, take the time you need on Black Ops 6, right? I would much rather a better Black Ops 6 than a worse Black Ops 6, but a marginally better Monofair 3 Zombies, right? I would take that trade any day of the week. It's just the fact that they sold the game under the pretense that it was being developed by Treyarch, that Monofair 3 Zombies was being developed by that team. And we were all so excited for that. And we know what that Treyarch team is capable of. We know how good their work is. And so for them to kind of sneakily switch off the project, for us to have to hear about that from leakers first, and then only later for them to confirm that Sledgehammer were taking the reins. That, I think, left a bitter taste in a lot of people's mouths, and it certainly meant that my comment sections were very disgruntled with the way that they were being treated and the promises that they felt like were being broken by the Activision and the Call of Duty teams. And just overall, I feel like some of the really epic and exciting and awesome moments, the gameplay moments that are possible in Modern Warfare 3, like, for example, when you're exfilling and you just have that kind of cluster of zombies around you and you're mowing down so many zombies at once and it's really hectic and there's so much going on on screen. I feel like that wasn't really leaned into in a way that would have made the best possible use of the technology that facilitates that stuff, right? Like from a technological perspective, it's not easy. Like I've got to really give Treyarch credit for finding a way to have that many players on a map at a given time and that many zombies on a map at a given time and for the entire thing not to just shut down. Like positive energy where it's due, that is a technical marvel that in the past we would have laughed at the idea of because it's just been impossible for so many years, right? So they achieved that, but then they didn't do anything with it. It just went nowhere. And that's unfortunate, right? Like we're obviously going to see that and see that at the start of the game and go, well, you're selling this as a live service. So that surely means that there is ample room to do some incredible stuff with this in the future. And the incredible stuff just hasn't really materialized. And I think that's really unfortunate. And I, I, I think that as much as there's a lot of Black Ops 6 hype right now, there's obviously a worry deeply embedded in me of skepticism saying, well, they set up Modern Warfare 3 Zombies to look really cool and then it kind of wasn't. And they set up Vanguard to look really cool and then it kind of wasn't. It, what if we end up having a 3 P? right? What if that happens once again? And I, I don't think that the sort of terms of engagement this year with Black Ops 6 are the same. I think that the game is being developed in a very different way and it's a very different team working on it and there's very different stakeholders in place and there's very different focus on what the post-launch support needs to be and all of these things but man they make it hard to be a zombies fan <laughs> so let me know your thoughts on this i'd really appreciate on this video if you could just drop a comment and let me know do you agree with me do you feel like I have an accurate understanding of your opinion of Modern Warfare 3 and how it's gone? Or do you feel like, actually, I'm a little off base and, and you have a sort of a different vibe and a different take on, on how things have gone this year? I would love for you to let me know that in the comments section down below. I still don't have any word from Activision on whether or not I'm going to be able to go to COD next. So I'm still waiting on that. We'll see. But in the meantime, any likes on the video are appreciated. And I'll talk to you very soon as the story unfurls further.